Hey there, this is David. We'll get to the National Convention episode in just a moment, but before we do, I wanted to let you know that the NFB of Pennsylvania is going to be in the exhibit hall down in Orlando at this year's convention. Stop by and say hello at table D27. That's D like in David, 27. We'll have five different kinds of delicious chocolate bars, plus we'll have a great-looking tote bag. It's a cream-colored tote with a double pocket on one side, and on these totes, in the lower left corner of the pocketed side will be a graphic that says Blinded Heart. On the lower right corner will be the NFBFPA logo. And on the flip side of the bag, covering the entire back, will be the White Canes Connect cover art graphic. They are great looking bags. Some will be printed, some will be embroidered. In the embroidered bags, the Blinded Heart graphic will also be tactile. And there is a very limited edition of the embroidered bags that will also have bling. So you'll see lots of sparkly bits along with the embroidered graphics on that bag. Again, we're at table D27. Exhibit hall hours are 9 to 5 on the 4th and 5th of July. And from noon to 1.45 p.m. and 5 to 9 p.m. on the 6th of July. So stop by and see us at table D27. I'll be there quite often. And now... Let's get to the episode. Hello, everyone. My name is Lynn Heights. I am the president of the National Federation of the Blind of Pennsylvania. Hi, everyone. I'm Kay Baker, and I am the secretary of the National Federation of the Blind of Florida. Hello, everyone. I'm Camille Tate, and I am first vice president of the National Federation of the Blind of Florida. And you are listening to White Canes Connect. Hey there, PA Federationists. Welcome to another episode of White Canes Connect, presented by the National Federation of the Blind of Pennsylvania. My name is David Goldstein, the first vice president of the NFB of PA. Joining me today is White Canes Connect creator and co-host, Lisa Bryant. Lisa, how are you today? Excited. Um, talking about our national convention has got me all pumped. Um, as, as, so, as I said in our Wonderful conversation with Lynn, our president, and also Kay and Camille from the Florida affiliate. I haven't been to a national convention since 2019, and 2019 was my first convention. So this one for me feels like the first time all over again. I went last year, so I've been to one and a half conventions because that, too, was my first convention in 2019. Well, half of it, at least, because of air pl- <laughs> air issues. And I'm worried because I'm flying American to Orlando. Yeah. So I'm worried. If you don't see me there at the beginning, you'll know they messed up again. Yeah, yeah. But our national convention is in Orlando, Florida, July 3rd through the 8th. Camille and Kay are from the Florida affiliate, and they're also very much involved in the planning as the host state you know, generally is. So we talk about what they do, what all goes on behind the scenes in this. And Lynn, of course, shares um, how Pennsylvania will have its presence at the exhibit hall and, and some other things, some very, very useful tips for any first timers. Yes, absolutely. And if you're a first timer, uh, which I miss this because of the already mentioned air issues, go to the Rookie Roundup because that is something that will be very helpful for you going forward. And as both Kay and Camille said, get the information that you need. Either have it on your phone so you can pull it up very easily. Take a picture of the exhibit hall map so you can just reference that. Again, when you take an image, whether you use Be My Eyes or anything else to listen to it, you can always drag your finger around to see what's where in the exhibit hall from that image on your phone. So very good information they have in the episode. And again, like Lisa said, I am very excited to go to Florida and looking forward to seeing anybody that's down there. If you're going to the convention, please stop by the our exhibit hall table. The NFBFPA will have that presence, as we'll hear in the upcoming interview and we'll be selling bags and all sorts of things and candy. And I'm I'm sorry if you don't get the chocolate peanut butter bars. That means I bought them all. (laughs) So let's hear from Kay Baker and Camille Tate about 
this year's national convention in Orlando, Florida. Lynn, Kay, and Camille, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you for having us today, David and Lisa. Thank you for having us. We are happy to be here. Thank you. So we got PA and Florida in the house. I wanted to kind of start with some bragging rights. And let's go around and talk about uh, what number convention this is for you. Lynn, What's what number is this for you? Boy, I'll tell you. You got you get me on the math question. Um, at least what? 20, 24. Okay. Okay. How about you? I think it is at least uh, my 13th convention. Camille? This will be my ninth national convention. So uh, ding, 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 ding. Lynn, you win. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. You get a, um, I don't know, a special greeting from a the toaster. person that checks you in or something. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, so excited to to talk about what really goes in, like, what does a host state have to do in, in terms of getting ready for national convention? But before we do that, Lynn, uh, I thought maybe we could start with you sharing some numbers um, on our end. How many people approximately do we have from PA that are going to national yet? Do you know? So I do not have the official registration yet, but from what I have heard from individuals who've contacted me. I think we have about 25. And any first timers this year? At least at least two first timers. Okay. There could be a um sorry about that. Make that three first timers. Uh-huh. Okay. We mm-hmm. might have to um follow up with them afterwards. And we will have, of course, as every affiliate will have uh, a table at the exhibit hall. Uh, We'll want you to um, make sure you plug that. And I guess we can also talk about our other fundraiser that will be I'm just going to say peddling, but that's probably not the best word um, (laughs) that we will be soliciting support for. But we want to give our folks, uh, Kay and Camille, um, just a, a time to introduce yourself. Just give us a little brief bio on you and when you joined the Federation. Uh, Kay, I'll throw it to you first. Okay, uh, so I'm Kay Baker. I uh, joined the Federation in 1990. Mm-hmm. Um, I found out about the Federation because um, I was coming home from school one day and some mail that my mother, I think, intended to throw away had dropped onto the stairs and one of the pieces of mail uh, was a cassette tape of the student slate which is an old publication from the the uh, national federation of the blind student division uh-huh. and i popped that thing in my cassette player while my mother was still at work and um a, a gentleman by the name of michael was talking about the wonders of washington seminar and all that mm-hmm. goes on there and mm-hmm. what was available for students and when my mother came home from work, I surprised her by saying, hey, you know, um, I'm going to D.C. this year. <laughs> and um, not only did she have to pay because she was my mother and I was 19 years old. I was going to ask how old were you then? Yeah, but um, but I was she did not you know, she didn't want her blind daughter going to a place like D.C. alone. Yeah. So she she commandeered a friend to go with me. But from that point on, I was hooked on the Federation. Oh, that's a wonderful story. And it all all happened by just literally a slip of mail falling on the on the steps somewhere. That's- yeah, I think that I had been getting those publications, but maybe she had tossed them because she <laughs> wasn't, you know, she didn't think that, oh, my daughter doesn't need that, you know, but yeah. I didn't realize how much I, I did need it. It, it. The Federation had changed my life from the moment I, I stepped into the high, mm-hmm. Holiday Inn Capitol and saw so many people tapping around with their canes and mm-hmm. walking around with their dogs and just yeah. all the things that, that, that being a federationist involved for those, for those guys. Um, I knew that that could be me. And yeah. I was just, I was taken away. I was completely enthralled with it. So how was your vision at that time? Did you have a little bit of vision? Is that how you noticed it or how? No, how did it I, um, I've always pretty much had the same vision. I'm almost totally blind. I can see light and dark and maybe some, objects shadow type vision um my vision has only 
it's gotten a little muddier as I've gotten older, <laughs> but it's never really changed. So um, I was just walking upstairs and I think I, my foot hit something and I was like, what, what's the mom drop some mail. And, and it happened to be a tape. <laughs> so I picked it up and, and I, I read the outside of the cassette in Braille. And um, I, I actually thought to myself, Oh, I wonder why it's on the stairs. She must have meant to throw it away. <laughs> and I wonder, have you been going to Washington Seminar ever since then as well? I went for the first many years. Um, I, I, I'm, I live in Florida now, but I used to live in Atlanta. And so the the uh, the Georgia affiliate sent me several times back in the 90s. And then mm-hmm. um, kind of life took over and I started developing a career and yeah. other other things going on in my life. So I didn't go as often. And then once I moved to Florida, I have been uh, twice. They they uh, they they alternate certain certain delegates. So mm-hmm. um, I uh, I've been twice. Camille, how about you? Let's tell us your your journey. Well, um, I lost my vision in 2005, and um, I will be quite honest. I did not know what the National Federation of the Blind was. I'd never heard of it. And then in 2015, I got a postcard in the mail. And my at that time, my aunt was reading my mail. I had very little to no technology to assist with that. And she said, there's this thing they're starting in here in Melbourne, where I live in Melbourne, Florida. And it's the National Federation of the Blind of Florida. And she uh, gave me the phone number and I typed it up in my laptop and I thought about it and thought about it. And I called the phone number on the postcard. And it was Joe Nolte. And he said that uh, they were starting a chapter in Melbourne, there was no presence of the Federation in my, my, my county. So he said, do you want to come? And I'm not you really a joiner, but by this point, I'd been blind 10 years. And you, while I was living independently, I wasn't really independent. I wasn't doing things. Yeah. I wasn't going out and enjoying myself. So I said, let me check this. And we formed our chapter at that first meeting. And I was elected to the chapter board. And I didn't know what I was getting myself into <laughs> and went to my first national convention the following year because I'd missed the 2015 convention and I just, I fell in love and I have not missed a convention since I am passionate about the Federation, our philosophy, our mission, mm-hmm. everything it all stemmed from that one little postcard that I got in the mail. Another wonderful story. I, I, I love it. I love it. So let's talk about, convention planning, Kay and Camille. We don't have, you know, any idea what that really entails. And does it is is it a matter of do all the all the chapters, is it all hands on deck? Um what I guess maybe what we'll do is what are you two specifically involved in? And Camille, I'm going to start with you this time. Okay. So I found myself taking on the role of the chair of our affiliate convention planning committee. Okay. And I've been involved in state convention planning for a number of years, being on the affiliate board for a, a while. And to be quite truthful, there was more work on the state convention side than on the mm-hmm. national convention side. Mm-hmm. Like we don't plan the agenda. We don't mm-hmm. get the guest speakers, things like that. But we have right. certain duties that we are responsible for. And that includes um, the in, our information table, um, our hospitality, running the affiliate hospitality suite, mm-hmm. um, you know, any other things we would like to plan for the convention. So it's still a lot of work. So we yeah. bring the entire affiliate together to piecemeal out jobs. We have certain uh, members who are chairing certain parts of our, our planning committee. Um, for example, Kay is chairing our hospitality suite. We have someone else uh, chairing our information table. Um, There's another person that is handling our exhibit hall table. We will have a a table in the exhibit hall. And then we have a couple of activities that we've planned for the convention um, as a whole. And it's, we like to say all hands on deck. Mm -hmm. Um, Anyone who is um, interested in being part of the planning process, we're welcome to join um, our convention planning committee shuffle around ideas and be given work assignments as needed. So it's still a lot of work because you, you have to coordinate, you have to make plans and, and execute those plans in order to bring to fruition the ideas that have come out of our convention planning committee. And how far um, out do you start? As soon as possible. 
Mm-hmm. Um, we have been meeting, had several meetings so far this year. Uh, we did begin planning in January for the, the items that we are responsible for. Mm-hmm. And we're coming now to the, the, the tail end of the, the, that planning strategy. And things are coming together very well. I will say we have a great fundraiser planned and another fun activity uh, planned for the convention in addition to our bit for the opening ceremonies on the first day of general session. Do you get a heads up prior to last year when President Riccobono announced that it was going to be Orlando? Did you guys know before that or did you find out the same time everybody else did? He actually reached out to our affiliate president at the time to ask him if Florida would like to be a host affiliate or the host affiliate. So I actually did know before the announcement was made at national convention last year. Um, the rest of the affiliate, I don't believe was aware until it was announced. It was a big surprise. Um, but as the, at that time, I was the sitting second vice president. So our affiliate president at the time asked uh, me what I thought about us hosting. And I said, you are the president. You can, you make that decision, but I say, let's go for it. Um, mm-hmm. cause we're returning to Orlando and yeah. this is a good way for us to highlight and showcase some of the wonderful parts of living in Florida. So I actually did know ahead of time, but everyone else found out at convention. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Camille talked a little bit about, um, what you're doing. Why don't you tell us a little more detail of how you're involved in the planning? So just like there's a um, a hospitality suite for the national, the the national hosts, the affiliate generally hosts one as well. So that's what I'm in charge. I'm I'm in charge of the affiliate run hospitality suite. And what we will have is uh, just about every day of convention. We're open for quite a while and we'll have coffee. We can't live without coffee. (laughs) We'll have uh, sodas and waters and some light snacks. We're not going to, have any meals for anybody. We're not going to be making sandwiches or, or, you know, any prime rib or anything like that, (laughs) but we will have some chips, cookies, crackers, um, candy, maybe some fruit products for healthier individuals and, um, some nuts and seeds and stuff. And, um, we'll have that available because the hospital, we feel, or I feel that the hospitality room is kind of a place for people to come and just, uh, Un- unwind. Um, the National yeah. Convention is so busy and so overcrowded. There's people waiting in lines, pushing and pulling, dogs, canes. Um, everybody is there at one time. And sometimes you just need to sit down. And yeah, <laughs> so we decompress we, a little bit. Decompress, yes. Yeah. So we think of the hospitality room as that that venue. So um, we hope that anybody will. And, and you know, if if you have anybody in your affiliate that is in need of a volunteer opportunity or just want something to do um we will accept volunteers from any affiliate because mm. um we need people to work during these shifts we have we're open uh, we start being open on july 2nd but then every other day the third through the eighth we're open at least you know at some some days 10 hours wow. so we we need individuals to come and work two to three hour shifts to kind of help welcome and hand out Cokes and sodas and waters. So if anybody that is in your affiliate is looking for a volunteer opportunity, they should definitely contact me. But that's my main role is to, is to, uh, and of course, all of us that are in the Florida affiliate, we've been charged with the uh, responsibility of just welcome, welcoming everybody going around to, if we see somebody that looks a little lost, you know, stop Mm -hmm. them and say, Hey, are you okay? Do you need something? Um, Sometimes convention can be frustrating. You think you're going in the right direction, but you end up wrapped around a pole and you don't know where you're (laughs) going. And so, you know, you can stop and say, hey, can I can I help you get somewhere? Can I talk you through something? Did you lose your family? Did you lose your pup? You know, what's going on? So we're here to be kind of welcoming source for, for our convention as well. I'm guessing the hospitality suite would be a good place if you are at one of the other hotels in the group where, hey, you know, people that are in the main hotel can just go up to their room and relax for a minute. But folks who are at other hotels won't necessarily have that opportunity to wait for a shuttle or get an Uber and then come and go and and whatnot. Hospitality suite, I would think, would be a good spot to go. Yes, absolutely. Yep. If you're in one of the um, wonderful overflow hotels, but you just need a break, you know, um, come in and and sit down, relax for a few minutes and um, we'll make you feel welcome. 
So I wonder from um, you first, Lynn, and then we'll, you know, swing it back to Kay and Camille, because uh, I, I know that you've gotten more information about the meaning you, Lynn, and, and you two guys, um, you mo- know more about the convention agenda than maybe some of the rest of us do. Anything that you're in particular really excited about or looking forward to, Lynn? You know, it's always and it's always great um, with Pennsylvania being such a large state. I really don't have an opportunity to see, you know, everybody who's a member. Yeah. And especially the new members, it's really great to have time, you know, to sit and meet them and talk with them. And, you know, kind of um, with this being their first convention get them over that hump of, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? <laughs> um, give them some suggestions of what would be the best options. Like, you know, resolutions is always one of those meetings that a first timer should go to. And of course the national board meeting um, and the rookie roundup. I mean, there's, there's a few things that are very key for first timers. Mm-hmm. Um I'm very excited about the exhibit hall. I always like kind of going around the exhibit hall to see what the different affiliates are selling. So, mm-hmm. you know, but I just, I look forward to seeing everybody. And, you know, I know several people from other states. Um, Denise Valkima and I actually used to run, uh, work at the hospitality, The pre- I'm sorry, the presidential suite mm. uh, the first morning. We used to do that together. So it would be nice to see her again and say hi. And and Denise is from, for people who don't know, she's from the Florida affiliate. Mm-hmm. She was yeah. the previous president. Ah. Well, I guess two presidents ago. Mm-hmm. So Camille K, what has you most excited? Because we're go- also going to talk about what you can tell us about Orlando, but in terms of the convention itself, inside the doors of the convention, uh, Kay, what's got you kind of chomping at the bit for? Well, I'm I'm kind of like Lynn. I am a huge fan of the exhibit hall. Mm-hmm. I usually set aside at least all, all of one day, most of a day, sometimes split in half, four hours one day and four hours another day to spend the whole day in the exhibit hall. I wear my tennis shoes. I bring my water and I, I spend all day in there going from table to table to table. Um, I have friends that go together. I go by myself. I don't want to be bothered. I, I want to go. Do from we table know to table. how many exhibitors we have so far? Anybody know that? I haven't seen a number, but I've, okay. I've, I think it's usually quite a few. Mm hmm. I Which love is why you technology. have to do it over a couple of days, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I love the new technology. I like to go and play with the different Braille displays, listen to the the presentations about new technology. Um, I think that I have a feeling that AI-based technology is going to be in this year. Mm-hmm. I don't know that to be a fact, but it, just based on things that I've, I've heard from other technology vendors, I think there's going to be some AI-based stuff and and I'm really looking forward to, you know, playing with the technology and um, spending money. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to give, before we move on to Camille, do you want to talk about, I found the exhibit hall to be somewhat overwhelming last year in Houston yeah. because it's a big open space. There's a whole bunch of people talking. And of course, with a bunch of blind people like we are, a whole bunch of voiceovers going off. And that's how I typically get from point A to point B in any kind of situation, wanting to know, hey, I wonder what this place is without going up and saying, hey, who are you and what do you sell? And then getting sucked into a 10 minute ordeal about something that maybe I don't want to listen to. Do you have a tip on how to do that? I know last year I found out after the fact that Good Maps had done a map of the uh, con- exhibit hall area. But how do you how do you do it? You just go up and down the aisles. What do you do? I do. I start at the very beginning table, and I go from table to table to table. And if it's something I'm not interested in, like I I I do not have a guide dog. I'm not opposed to them in any way, shape, or form. But I just don't have one. So when I encounter a dog school, I just say, hey, you know, thank you for coming. I'm so glad you're here. And then I just quietly move on. Um, So I don't I guess I have a way of not letting them (laughs) suck me into a presentation. 
Um, so you do, are literally just asking the vendor, who are you? What are you selling? Yep. Mm-hmm. And they do have Braille labels on the tables, Braille and print labels. Okay. So if there's someone talking to the vendor, I'll right. kind of reach around that person and feel the Braille sign. Right. Um, and then I'll excuse myself if I happen to bump into the person. And um, then I'll, if it's something I'm just not, not if it, if it says, you know, if it's something I'm just not interested in, then I just mm-hmm. quietly slip past. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I go to each table. And um, then if I see something that I absolutely want to go back to, like if there's a table that's just totally overrun with, with, uh, it, with the uh, members standing in line, then I'll, I'll ask somebody, Hey, what table is this that you guys are waiting on? And they'll tell me and I'll say, you know, I'm going to come back Make a little <laughs> and I'll mental go back note. <laughs> a different mental note and I'll yeah, go back yeah. a different time. And more than likely you want to go to it. If there's a line for something, it's got to be something pretty decent. Yes. Like AT guys, they always have a line. Yeah, and They have yeah. lots of technology. Mm-hmm. And so I, I just generally plan on either getting there to see them super early or going at the mm-hmm. end of convention when everybody else is already gone. Camille, what are you most excited about? Okay, so uh, my two passions, and I think it's one of the reasons why I have remained in the Federation and, and will never leave. Um, the family aspect is also another reason why I, I stayed, but my two passions are resolution and legislation. Mm-hmm. I don't miss either meeting when I go to convention. Uh, and actually, in fact, this year, I will be serving on the resolutions committee, so I'm, I'm kind of happy about that. Mm-hmm. Um so those are the two things that I make a point, no matter what else is going on, <laughs> that I go to those two meetings because those are my absolute passion. Um, I chair resolutions in Florida. So I, 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 I love the process. I love the thought process. Um, if there is debate, I like to hear both sides of the oh, argument yeah. before yeah. we vote uh, up or down to, to see if it goes forward to the floor and things like that. But those are the two things that I make sure I do not miss at each convention. Mm-hmm. I also like the exhibit hall, but never seem to get enough time to wander around. And I'm, I also don't like to wander around. So I take a look, I believe, I don't know if it's in, listed in the agenda, it probably is, but um, on the website is usually a listing of all of the vendors mm-hmm. and their table numbers. And mm-hmm. if there are anything, is there anything in particular I'm looking for, whatever year it is, I make a note on my phone that if I'm going to the exhibit hall, those are the tables I want to hit first if I don't get to anyone else. And um, it does sometimes mean asking, hey, which table is this? Because it does get a little overwhelming because it, it's always crowded um, in the exhibit hall. So I make a point to note where I need to go. And if I get a little turned around, I just ask, which table are you at? So I can know which way I need to go to find where I want to be. So you're a little more strategic and you <laughs> kind of map yeah. your map your agenda out ahead of time. <laughs> you yeah. know, this is interesting. Like everyone has their own what works for them, you know. So uh it's it's good. I hope people out there listening will just kind of take this in because you'll probably do a little bit of K style, a little bit of Camille style, <laughs> depending <laughs> on the day and the time that you have available. Um Lynn, um, speaking of the exhibit hall. Why don't we first give a little plug on PA? What have we got going for um, our table? Sure. Well, you know what? If I can, before I do the PA plug, I'd also like to let especially first timers know that if they go to the information table in the exhibit hall, Mm -hmm. they do have Braille and print lists of all the exhibitors and their table numbers. And um, the the folks who work that table are really good because they'll tell you, okay, the A tables are around the perimeter of the room, you know, B tables are the first square, C tables are the second mm-hmm. square. So, you know, that might be something really good to pick up. I mean, you can always open up your iPhone and point it at that print page. And, you know, we know with iOS, it's just phenomenal. Um, As for the Pennsylvania table, we're going to be selling five different kinds of candy bars. And we're also going to be selling these really awesome canvas bags. So last year, when President Riccobono gave his speech at the banquet, 
he mentioned the phrase blind at heart Mm -hmm. several times. And that really resonated with some of our members. So we got this really creative person to put together um, a design that basically says blind at heart. And so that is going to appear on the front left side of the bag. The NFB logo with all the color who's it's will be on the right side on the front. And on the back of the bag, guess what, Lisa, is going to be the logo for the White Canes Connect podcast. (laughs) And the words White Canes Connect and where you can go on the web to find the podcast. So we're very, very excited. We haven't done anything like that before. Mm -hmm. So um, there'll be two types of bags. There will be embroidered bags. And then there'll be another set of bags that'll be a little bit cheaper. And they will be, they will have the same design, but they'll be sublimated rather than um, embroidered or silk screened. So the design will actually hold up a lot better. Mm-hmm. So we're very, very excited. I also want to mention there's a pocket on the outside of the bags. One other thing about the the embroidered bags, the blinded heart drawing graphic is actually going to be tactile. So you will be mm-hmm. able to feel that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. The gentleman who's doing it, it actually lives in Florida. Mm-hmm. Um. And he's going to be bringing them over whenever he comes to the convention. Why don't one of you tell us what you're going to be offering at your table, Kay or Camille, whichever one of you wants to take that. Well, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that one, Kay, because I'm excited. I'm excited. Oh, oh good. <laughs> so, well, the first thing that we're doing is um, we our chapters who will be volunteering at the exhibit hall may have their own sales um, and our Student Division of Florida is also planning to have their own sale at the same time at our exhibit hall table. But our big fundraiser is we're um, raffling off a vacation package. And mm-hmm. it's $20 a ticket. Uh-huh. It is a it is going to be the choice of the winner between Los Cabos or Puerto Vallarta. Um four or five nights, depending on which package you choose. It's going to be up to the winner, but the price is the same. Um, it is at a five, a four star resort. Um, it's either, either location, one or the other. It does not include airfare, but okay. it includes all of the good stuff and that you can get in your Mexico vacation. Um, like I said, $20 a ticket. You have one year to book an additional mm-hmm. year to take your, your trip. Mm-hmm. And we are throwing in a $500 gift card that you could use to offset the cost of your travel to Mexico or to eat or buy whatever you want in Mexico. So that's the big fundraiser. Wow. Uh, $20 a ticket. And we're, we'll also be selling wristbands for our Welcome to Florida concert. Uh, the wristbands are going to be $10 a wristband. And um, we're going to be putting out some more information about uh, the, the concert part um, later on uh, in, in this month before the convention. So there are a lot of things that we're selling. I don't know what each chapter that's volunteering is selling. Right. Um, but like I said, I know Jacksonville will be selling something. KKK. Um, our student division will be selling. And I don't know if any other chapters will sell things other than the uh, raffle tickets or the concert wristbands. And will they, the chapters, will they be there also at the Florida table? Yes. That, they'll okay. be taking shifts. Okay. Yeah. So they take shifts and they sell, they do the raffles and whatever they may have brought to, to sell. Yes. So we talked a lot about the convention proper, I guess. <laughs> but for the folks who are packing in maybe an extra day or either on the front end or after the convention is over, what are some things that you either one of you can tell us that we what's a must see or a must do in Orlando? Can you speak to that? Well, I would say that for uh, I can only speak for me. I love movies and entertainment type stuff. So of course there's Universal Studios. There's, yeah. There's a uh, a lot of the Disney stuff has. I think there's a Harry Potter themed mm-hmm. uh, park and there's Star Wars and other stuff like that. Um, so if you're interested in that type of uh, entertainment, 
then there's always something like Universal. Um, that's I think that would be a must see if I had the time mm-hmm. and the funds to go to Disney. Yeah, that's what I would want to do. Camille, you have any suggestions? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to theme park out. <laughs> yeah. um, that is theme park potential for us. But there is a place, if you are a history buff, um, it's, I don't think it's located in Orlando proper. It might be more like Lake Buena Vista, which is not that far really from Orlando. They're all little bedroom communities or, or uh, little urban communities. But Medieval Times is a great experience if you are a history buff. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been to Medieval Times three times in my entire life. And you really get a flavor for haha, the medieval times, mm-hmm. um, the types of food they offer, um, the atmosphere. Sometimes they put on a little show while you're eating. Because I, I am a, a huge history fan. I love all things history, mm-hmm. um, mostly European and, and Western civilization. And it's a great experience to have. It's family friendly. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I can't say what the price points are now, but be, you know, because I haven't been in a long time. But it, I think it's a great experience. I also love all things live production. Um, there is a King Center, which is a theater um, located. This, well, we have one here in um, Melbourne where I live. But there's also uh, a, a, the main theater is in located in Orlando. You can see live plays. Um, sometimes they put on musicals. Sometimes they have concerts um, with um, you know musicians that are actually still alive and kicking. Mm-hmm. Um, good music and, and things like that. I, but I, I'm I'm more into live entertainment. I love plays and, and concerts and things like that. You had mentioned a concert with the wristband earlier. Is that going to be yes. during convention? Yes, it is. We are planning for July the 4th from 8 to 10 p.m. It will be uh, run by a DJ and it's going to be, uh, this is a, a tentative title because I haven't approached the board about it yet, but the flavor of Florida. And we're going to be playing music by Florida musicians, uh, music about Florida, all things Florida Mm -hmm. music-wise for that time slot. And if you think about it, there's a lot of musicians from Florida. I mean, Leonard Skinner, Tom Petty, then there's there's other, there's country artists and rap artists. Mm -hmm. There's just every different type of genre that you can think of. There are musicians from Florida, so it could be a little bit of anything. And it will be family friendly. Thinking about it, just when she was saying the the different flavors, you know, you have the Latin sound, you have the Jimmy Buffett yeah. style, uh, things like that. Lynn, before we wrap this up, um, do you want to put in, and we're going to ask Camille and Kay to do the same, put any sort of call to action out there? Do we still need help with anything or on our end uh, help needed, maybe manning our table? What would you want to uh, sort of suggest that people, other ways people can get involved? Well, you know, yes, absolutely. I know that David has had some folks contact him about the exhibit hall table, but we always, you know, can use a few more helping hands which would be really, really awesome. And, you know, don't forget if we, if you see somebody and they seem a little bit lost, you know, don't be afraid to go over and say, Hey, you know, my name is, and I'm from, and, you know, can I help you with something? Mm -hmm. Um, The person may say, no, I'm fine. And so you just go on your way. But, um, you know, it's always great to put out that helping hand and that person that you help may end up being a friend for the rest of your life. You never know. You right. never know. Yeah. And you, what you don't want to do, though, is what we all don't want to have done is just grab them and drag them somewhere. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Please, oh, absolutely. No, no. Not, yeah. no, no. Can I add a sightseeing opportunity? Yes, yeah. do. Please. So um, you need to take a bus to this. But if you are there an extra day, you need to go to St. Augustine. Mm -hmm. And St. Augustine is the oldest city in the United States. Mm -hmm. And it is really, really phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It's a got to go kind of place. Mm -hmm. So that bus, they give guided tours around the city? They do. They actually have a trolley that runs around St. Augustine and it stops mm-hmm. at different places. People can get on and off. Mm. Um, and the driver of the bus will, um, you know, tell you about different places. Um, there's a, 
um, a blind gentleman who played the piano and sang. Hmm. I can't think of his name, but he went to the school for the blind in Florida. Um, oh my gosh. He's older than Stevie Wonder. Oh, he's a national artist. Yes. Oh, Jose Feliciano? No. No. Hmm. It'll come to you. Ah! About three o'clock tomorrow morning. (laughs) (laughs) Not Ray Charles. Ray Charles. That's oh, was it? it? Oh, oh, golly. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't know he. So he's from Saint Augustine. He's well, I don't know. Now. Yeah, I don't. He's from all, he was born in Albany, Georgia, but mm-hmm. he may have gone to St. Augustine. Yeah, he oh, okay. went to the school for the blind in in St. Augustine. Ah, yes, he did. Yeah, that's a nice little fun fact. Thank you for that. Um, Kay and Camille, uh, Kay, I think you mentioned that you could use help with the hospitality room. Is there anything else that you'd want to, and, and also feel free to give any contact information too. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, anyone who is interested in volunteering in the hospitality room or just, you know, um, being part of the welcoming, anything like that, you can, um, send an email to NFB. J A X that's N F B J A X at gmail.com. And we're happy to have any volunteers, but the other little thing that, that I want to say is, is kind of similar to, um, to what, what, uh, others have said. Convention is a very stressful time. And, Mm -hmm. um, I think we need to be kind to each other. You know, uh, occasionally we're going to run into a person. We're going to bump them, scrape them, Mm-hmm. Um, step on their foot. <laughs> we don't want to, we don't mean to. Um, but I think the response should always be of kindness. Um, I, I actually had somebody elbow me, elbow me in the face by accident. Oh, and no. I just went on my way and said, Hey, that's all right. Yeah. Um, so we're going to have stuff happen. And um, I think we just need to approach it with a sense of kindness. And like Lynn said, you never know if that person that stepped on your foot might be the person that you grow to be best friends with for the next 30 or 40 years. So take these opportunities to, to meet and greet each other and care about each other and calm down and just, we we've got to get out of this mode of don't touch me, leave me alone. You know? And so we, we, I think like, like David said, nobody wants to be grabbed, but we have to, um, we have to know that we're all kind of in the same situation here at convention and, and we're, we're all just trying to get through. So let's, let's love on each other a little bit. That's good. That's good. Okay. Camille. One area that we probably will need some help with is at our information table. Um, Only because that what we will be doing is people will come to us to the table and they'll be looking for, you know, what's the, what's the good restaurant in the area. By the way, we will have a restaurant guide. Available, oh, nice. uh, available in Braille, large print, and on a QR code. Awesome. Um, so, you know, uh, that way you can access it online and don't have to carry around any, any additional papers. Um, but it's also a place to direct people if they find they don't know where they are or they need direction to get somewhere. That's going to be at our information table. And we can always use some help with that. And we have our talking signs and our marshals. Um, but Sometimes the sounds can be overwhelming. So if anyone's interested in, in helping out at the information table, um, you can send an email to me and I'll direct it to the person that's uh, heading that. My email address is C like Charlie, my last name, Tate, T-A-T-E, 2076 at att.net. Um, and I can direct that to the person who is um, sort of wrangling our information table for us. And just to reiterate what Kay said about being gracious and having a little grace. There's going to be thousands of us there. And I can't say the number of times I've been stepped on. Um, I actually, uh, unfortunately stepped on someone's guide dog a couple of years ago. And I felt so terrible because it was so crowded and we were all walking and somebody sort of elbowed me and I took a step to the side. So I didn't fall. And Mm -hmm. I I actually stepped on someone's uh, poor guide dog. I felt so bad. Mm. I tell people we dance with our canes. I can Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it's just, it, that is just the, the natural course of business when we're all going 
where we need to go. So for us to, to have some grace about it, mm-hmm. um, and understand that it's not being deliberately mean or hurtful. It, ju- it just happens when you have so many people all together. Right. It's just how it is when we all get together. Everybody gets the cane between their legs like you're playing hockey on yeah. a breakaway. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, it, that, it, it just happens. And it, it and it, like you said, nobody's doing it intentionally. It, it's, you know, it's like playing asteroids because there's a whole bunch of us just going every which way. And that's just the way it is. As far as the restaurants go, you mentioned the guide. Are there places near the Rosen Center that are walkable? Oh, gosh, yes. The oh, Rosen yes. Center Good. is one of the most awesome hotels in the sense that the restaurants inside the hotel are pretty darn good. And there's one, okay. there's a place inside called Red's Deli that's actually pretty uh, economical. Um, and they have yes. excellent pizza, very good breakfast. But mm. you can walk to a Denny's, you can walk to a Red Lobster. I believe there's an IHOP, my favorite place in the whole world, Duncan. <laughs> um, yeah, I love Duncan. McDonald's, yes, yeah, Duncan. Camille and I and uh, our friend Denise, we walk there just about every day. I think I think we poor Denise was Dunkin' out by the time we were finished. <laughs> but every uh, morning, every morning. <laughs> but um, but we we there's so many places to walk to if you don't want to spend those hotel prices, right. and 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 if you just want to get away, you know, like we keep talking about getting away. Convention is is a truly wonderful experience, but. In order to keep yourself gracious, as we've been mm-hmm. discussing, one of the things that I have to do is step away and maybe get away. just yeah. go get a meal at McDonald's or Denny's mm-hmm. where there's not going to be that many other people. Mm-hmm. That's good wisdom. I think I saw something come out on, on this, and but obviously I'm not well first to talk about it. But is there a way for people who are not, for whatever reason, able to make convention? Is there any virtual component this year? Does anyone know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It they are charging $10. $10. They are charging $10. Well, Lynn, Kay, Camille, um, this has been great. I am so excited to meet the two of you. I'll I'll find you. Um, this has been great. I'm I'm even more excited. I, David and Lynn know that I was on the fence for quite a while about going, and I just only recently decided, okay, I've got to get there. Because I actually have not been back since 2019. So I kind of feel like this will be my first time all over again. So Welcome excited. back. Yeah. 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 Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to thank everyone. And uh, really, like Lisa said, look forward to meeting Kay and Camille and all the other folks that we're going to meet when we're down there in Florida and uh, excited for it. Yeah. Thanks, Lynn. Thanks, Camille. Thanks, Kay. This has been great. And we'll see you all in Orlando. All right. Thank, thank you for thanks having us. Thank you Looking for having forward us. to it. Thank you Take- for having us. Thanks again to Lynn, Kay, and Camille for coming by and getting us all excited to be in Orlando the 3rd through the 8th of July. And Lisa, I'm very excited. If you are going to be at the convention, I'd love for you to work at the exhibit hall table. I am the one scheduling. I'm the one in charge of that whole thing. So please, I don't want to be at the exhibit hall all day, every day. (laughs) I need your help. I need your help. So please reach out. I will reach out to those folks who I know are going to see when they can possibly do a two-hour shift. We're only looking for a two-hour shift per person uh, throughout the entire convention. I'm excited to sell those bags. I'm really looking forward to the bags and uh, they sound like uh, uh, they're going to be awesome. I know I was working with Lynn and Juan Carlos, who's the one who's making the bags. And I'm excited to see them. I know Liz, my wife, is ready to buy one of each. And uh, it should be fun in Orlando. And and the bags will be great to carry all your extra stuff home. Yeah, I was going to say, we got to make sure we get Kate her bag in advance um, so that she can start collecting whatever she's buying or, you know, freebies, what have you. Uh, So yes, duly noted, David. And, you know, I was sort of laughing to myself. I loved how both um, Camille and Kay were just stressing uh, being nice, you know, just being nice, being patient. Um, I think the word just having some grace for people. But I loved how Lynn said, oh, you never know. You might meet your best friend. I was thinking, hey, you might get like a little romance out of there. You never know. <laughs> That's where my mind was going. <laughs> I don't know what that says about me, but um, 
I was like, oh yeah, friendship. Oh, sure, sure, that too. <laughs> but anyway, I, I agree with you, David. Um, I think it feels particularly exciting this year. Uh, maybe that's because I'm going again. I don't know. Um, but I hope that this got anyone else like me who decided very last minute to go. If you're still kind of teetering on the edge, maybe this will push you over to actually do it. It's not too late. Of course, you do have to, I think five the the five dollar um increase in price for registration is now right. and you would have to so. register i think you have to register on site now i think you have to wait oh, now to okay. register there but it's but you, it's can, still still a, you, you can still go you can yeah. still go yeah. um, you can try and find a roommate at the main hotel or get one of the overflow hotels and and it is going to be a lot of fun i'm really excited about going i know that <laughs> and i'm a little concerned because i have had issues at both state and national conventions in the past. Last year, I came home with COVID. A couple of years ago mm -hmm. in Pittsburgh, I had that little incident with the wall. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, uh, in episode 104, which just came out uh, about a week ago, we talked to Ed Plumacher, who is going to have some times doing some blind baseball, which I'm going to do. <laughs> for better or for worse for my health. But I'm really excited about that. I'm excited about seeing everybody again uh, that I might not see very often, whether they're in the affiliate and from other parts of the state or other people that I met at last year's convention or a few years ago when we were at uh, in Las Vegas. And it's just a lot of fun. It's uh, so if you're if you're going, please connect with us. We'd love to hear from you and you can tell us what you're excited for or what you after the fact, what you mm -hmm. thought was the best part of the convention. We'll give you the contact information in a minute, but it should be a lot of fun, Lisa. Yeah. And I was just thinking if anyone is going for the first time and you want to leave us a voicemail or email about your experience, we would love to air that. So the best, well, the, the email address for us is whitecanesconnect at gmail.com. Or give us a call at 267-338-4495, and you can let us know you've got three minutes, leave your name in town, and whatever comments or questions or experience might be. And if it's too long for three minutes, maybe we'll have you on an upcoming episode to talk more about it as your experience was, great. both both flying, maybe it's the first time you're flying on your own, maybe it's the first, first time convention, whatever it might be, we'd love to hear from you and maybe put something together sometime in later July or an August episode of White Canes Connect. One thing before we go that we wanted to talk about, uh, I guess it was Camille had talked about it, where some of the affiliates will also, I'm sorry, some of the Chapter. chapters will be selling things at the Florida table. Now, we're not going to be selling it at the our affiliate table, but the Keystone chapter, which Lisa and I are both a part of, are selling raffle tickets for dinner for a week. And what that is, there are seven restaurants that there will be a minimum of $50 per restaurant. And raffle tickets are $3 each or three for $10. So you can see Lisa, you can see me, any other Keystone chapter member will be selling those during the convention. The drawing is in August because we sell a lot both at the convention and locally. So if you are interested in buying some raffle tickets for dinner for a week, and I can tell you the restaurants, let's see if I remember them. There is Chipotle. Cheesecake Factory. Cheesecake Factory, right? Chick-fil-A. Outback. Texas Roadhouse. Texas Roadhouse. Panera. There's one more. This is what gets us in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> I will put the list in the show notes because I will be able to find that list somewhere on my computer after we get done. But again, dinner for a week from the Keystone chapter. It's a over $300 worth of gift cards. And again, you only have to pay $3 if you want one ticket or $10 if you want to get three tickets. And Lisa, I know I will be buying them, but not for myself, because I always think like last year at the national convention, the person that won the all expense paid trip to this year's convention was the spouse of somebody on either the national board or something that had something to do with the uh, with the convention. And everybody thought, man, this is fixed. So mm -hmm. I am going to buy some tickets, <laughs> but I'm going to do them for my listeners of my own podcast and friends who have supported other things that we've done in the past. I sold some of the state 
lottery raffle tickets that we do in April. I sold some to some listeners. So those folks are going to get, they don't know it yet. And I know at least one of them listens to this podcast. So she's going to know now, Renee, you know. <laughs> uh, I will have a ticket for them. And it's probably only going to be about six or eight tickets, but I am going to do that. And I'm excited uh, to have that. And I hope one of them wins because nobody won of those April drawing. Nobody that I had sold tickets to won. So that was mm -hmm. disappointing. But again, dinner for a week from the Keystone chapter and uh, just find one of us and we'll be happy to sell them to you. So we hope that this has gotten you um, even more excited if you're already going. Wow. If we convinced you to go after listening to this, please tell us. I mean, that would just make our day. So thanks for listening, everybody. And for those going, see you in Orlando. And that really would be something if we got them to go. Mm -hmm. Twisted your arm. Mm -hmm. Thanks again for listening, everyone. Take care. 